Hello friends, this is Mike from Right Minded, and this is the explanations video for SAT 2's Writing and Language section, passage number 3, question 28. This question comes in the middle of a big long paragraph, the second one in the passage, uh, the one describing the links between uh, global warming and otters and kelp. You know, the otters, they protect the kelp, the kelp absorbs the CO2, uh, CO2 causes global warming. Uh, that's that paragraph. Um, if you want to hear an explanation of the meanings in that paragraph or why I wrote these notes, uh, go to the video for question 26. That's where I describe that stuff. Now, though, we're just going to be dealing with this question, and this question really only deals with this one sentence. So let's read that. It's the sentence that starts with a recent study. So here we go. A recent study by two professors at the University of California, Santa Cruz, Chris Wilmers and James Estes, suggests that kelp forests protected by sea otters can absorb as much as 12 times the amount of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as those where sea urchins are allowed to devour the kelp. Now, when you see questions 27 and 28 in the middle of this sentence uh, and you've finished it, uh, the first thing you should do is go read each of these questions and ask yourself uh, for each one, is this a grammar uh, question or a writing strategy question? In other words, uh, do I have enough information to answer this question right now? Is it only about the way we want to frame the thought or, or express the thought? Or is it about what thought should we put here in the first place? Uh, that is, is it the kind of question where we need a deeper understanding of what the passage is about, what the paragraph is about, in order to answer it? Now, uh, the question is that this, uh, the answer to that question for both of these is that it's a grammar question. And here, uh, there's a separate video for question 27. You want to answer that one first. Uh, and then let's say you've gotten now to question number 28, uh, and you're looking at these answer choices. Uh, and you're trying to ask yourself, is this a grammar question or a writing strategy question? Um, do we have enough information to answer this question right now? The answer to that is yes. Uh, here, this is just a, what word should I put? here type question. Here we have the word devour. We have sea urchins are allowed to devour the kelp. Uh, but maybe that's not the best word. Maybe we should say sea urchins are allowed to dispatch the kelp, or they're allowed to overindulge on the kelp, or dispose of the kelp, etc. These types of questions are called precision questions. And uh, for the most part, these questions just test straight up vocab. What are the precise meanings of these words? Uh, and what are the conventions by which we where we here is just straight up the elite academic establishment English speakers. It's not slang. This is not minority communities. Straight up elite academics. Um, how do we use these words? And what do these specific words mean? So let's look at the sentence and then describe uh, how we use these various words. Uh, so rereading the sentence, and here I'm just going to focus on this very last part. Um, so we're going to say kelp forests protected by sea otters can absorb as much as 12 times the amount of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as those where sea urchins are allowed to devour the kelp. Now here we're talking about kelp forests and two different types of kelp forests. And this is familiar from the rest of the passage. Um, some kelp forests have otters in them. These kelp forests are going to be the ones where everything is going great because the otters are eating the urchins, and the urchins normally eat the kelp, but the otters are eating the urchins, so the kelp is doing great. And here it's saying that these forests absorb 12 times the amount of carbon dioxide, so they're absorbing a lot of carbon dioxide. Uh, they absorb 12 times more than the forests where sea urchins are allowed to devour the kelp. So this is, these are the ones where sea otters are allowed to, and we're wondering what this word is, do something to the kelp. So the question is, what is this thing that we should be saying that the sea urchins are doing to the kelp? So let's just ask ourselves what, what each of these words means specifically and whether it fits. Now here at the word devour sort of means to eat like voraciously uh, or like ravenously. You know, if you're devouring something, you think about like a lion devouring its kill um, or, you know, a really hungry person devouring a meal. We use the word to mean eat voraciously. Uh, now that makes sense. It makes sense because uh, sea otters are sort of, or sorry, sea urchins are kind of a scourge. They are like a plague. They're like locusts. Uh, are we are kind of generally on team kelp. Uh, we like being. We like kelp. I mean, kelp helps fight global warming. Uh, kelp is also nice, and otters help protect kelp from sea urchins. That's kind of been the broad framework of the passage so far. Um, so it kind of makes sense to be uh, describing these sea urchins as like viciously, attackingly eating the kelp. So there's the rightness of answer choice A. 
Um, here we're talking about the sea urchins as being pretty vicious. They're uh, eating the kelp voraciously. Now let's look at where answer choices B and C and D uh, are a little bit off. Now answer choices B and D I kind of want to take together because they're, they're similar in terms of uh, where they're slightly off. Um, they both suggest that kelp is the kind of thing that we want to get rid of. And here, let's go into detail on each one. So answer choice B, this word dispatch, um, we use the word dispatch uh, to describe like an opponent or a problem. Uh, you could say uh, that a really excellent boxer dispatched their opponent in the, in the fight. Um, and that's just to say like they made short work of their opponent and their, their opponent is like dealt with. You know, you can also dispatch a problem. Um, here, the kelp uh, isn't, I mean, well, so, so yeah, so this is, this is treating the subject, that the thing that's being dispatched as like something we didn't, like it's, it's gone from us and we're glad that it's gone, like good riddance, you know, oh, I dispatched that problem. He, is, he dispatched his opponent, they're gone, they're dealt with. No. Here, the kelp is not that kind of thing. We don't want the kelp to just like get out, you know? We want to keep the kelp. We like the kelp. Kelp helps fight global warming, you know? We like otters because they help protect kelp. We kind of hate the urchins. Um, so this would be fitting if the urchins were like getting rid of the kelp for us and we were super grateful for that, uh, but that's not what's happening. I mean, if anything, actually, a good example of dispatching would be the sea otters dispatching the sea urchins. That actually would be where the word dispatch would, would fit. Um, thinking of dispose of as well, and maybe dispose of is more accessible for a lot of you, uh, that has pretty much the same meanings. You know, you dispose of trash. You know, you, you, or you could you talk about you dispose of a problem, you dispose of some difficulty. Uh, you could even talk about disposing of some uh, horrible person who is annoying you, ugh, ugh, and just disposed of them. You know, um, you, you, you know, you have a garbage disposal. You get rid of trash. Uh, and here again, kelp isn't trash. We like kelp, you know? Uh, if anything, we want to dispose of the sea urchins. We want the otters to dispose of the sea urchins. It doesn't make sense in terms of what team we're on to say that the sea urchins are allowed to dispose of the kelp because uh, we, we like the kelp. It's not trash. All right. Now, uh, overindulge on is kind of an interesting one. Um, it's, it's close, it's really, really close, and this has, it really boils down to convention. Because, you know, I was talking about eating voraciously as being the right meaning for devour. I mean, devour means eat voraciously. And we do use overindulge on in the, and here again, we, right? Um, we, the elite academics uh, of the SAT, you know, that the SAT loves so much, use over, overindulge on uh, to, dis to, to describe someone, most often describing somebody uh, eating or, or engaging in some uh, luxury too much. You know, so you overindulge on pie. Uh, you overindulge by, you know, by eating too much dessert, by eating too big a meal. Oh, I overindulged myself. You can also talk about it in the context of like movies, you know, or like doing, you know, you should be working, but instead you're overindulging on like stupid gossip articles or YouTube videos or whatever. You're procrastinating. You're overindulging on these creature comforts when you should be working. Now, it's, it's so close. It's so, so close. I think the problem is that overindulgence, the concept of overindulgence is you want to be on the same side as the thing or person that is overindulging. You know, we often talk about like I'm overindulging myself, or you say you say that someone or something is overindulging themselves with a concern for their personal health, like for that thing's health. You know, like I overindulged on chips, and like oh, that's why I have like a stomach ache. You know, or or like whoa whoa, don't overindulge uh, on those TV shows. You know, don't overindulge yourself. Um, because I have a concern about your personal health. Um, here, I think those are the connotations that make this use of overindulge weird with respect to the urchins, uh, because we don't really have a concern about the urchins' uh, personal health so much. Um, it's also just like a really, the, the word has this implication of like, I, I should have held myself back, I knew better, but then like I, you know, but then I couldn't help myself. Um, and sea urchins also lack that kind of uh, mental desire to hold themselves back as well. You know, so it's not like they're overindulging, they're just eating voraciously because that's what they do. All right, 
That's all for these answer choices. I'll see you all in the next video.